Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Jig Retro where we're going to be taking a look at some of the ultimate on the go games because you will probably have access to them on the smartphone that's in your pocket. Whether you're in the waiting area at the dentist or on a short coffee break at work then these games will help you unwind and entertain you because on the whole they are pick up and play games. If you enjoy this video then please take a moment to like, share and subscribe. There was a time that I truly believed that the rise of the smartphone was going to completely eradicate the handheld console market. How wrong could I have been? When I first saw video games running on a smartphone, or it might have actually been maybe one of those iPod touches, I was absolutely blown away by the power and the graphics. Once I actually got hold of my very first iPhone, which was the 3GS, my Game Boy Advance fell by the wayside. As it turns out that was a little bit hasty because although the games look stunning and almost AAA in their presentation, the touchscreen controls were all in all pretty awful. Almost game breaking. Now I know that you could lug around a Bluetooth controller as well as your smartphone but I think at that point you'd probably be better off with a handheld console. I think that smartphone games work best when the developers have integrated the touchscreen as part of the game and really the gameplay is dedicated to short bursts. Or at very least just having one touch control pad to worry about. Anyway let's check out this list and you'll see exactly what I mean. Cut the Rope. This is a cute yet surprisingly deep little puzzle game where you have to use finger swipes over ropes in order to move the hungry creature around the playing field into the goal. This game has endless imaginative scenarios and mechanics that mix things up as you go and can provide a real challenge. The great thing is it saves as you go and you're never more than a few moments away from being able to put it down and not lose your progress. Heads Up, developed by Ellen DeGeneres in conjunction with Warner Brothers, is a super simple party game similar to charades and only really utilises the gyro sensors in the phone where you tilt the phone up to pass if you cannot guess the word correctly or down if you get it right. You are timed to get as many answers correct as possible. This is one of those games where you find if you get it out in a social situation then everyone groans. But believe me, before long there will be hooting and hollering at this game and it just works every time. Simple enough for anyone to enjoy and it really brings a party together in interacting. Geometry Dash is a brutally hard endless running platformer with hints to rhythm gaming. I have only picked this one up recently and I've been really enjoying the genuine challenge of it. It's like the same feeling of a super tough retro game. The only simple aspect to this one is in the controls where you can touch anywhere on the screen to jump and hold for multiple jumps. The key in this is the nanoseconds of timing as to whether you need to jump or not in each situation. Each level is pretty short with roughly three or four phases but similar in style to Super Meat Boy, each level will take you hundreds of attempts. The neon aesthetic is surprisingly mesmerising and the dance soundtrack keeps you going even when you want to rage quit. I've barely scratched the surface of this one but I am currently really enjoying it. Tiny Wings is a kind of momentum platform game where you have to use the hilly surfaces of the level to propel yourself up in the air and you have to use a variety of short and long touches on the screen at the perfect times to nosedive the bird character into the next slope in order to maintain your momentum. The idea is to get as far as you possibly can and achieve little objectives such as longest flight, largest combo without stalling, highest flight and the such like to upgrade your bird and therefore get further. A wonderfully styled and simple game. Yeah. 
Angry Birds Star Wars. Now unfortunately, this is one of my very favourite games in this series, but it has been pulled from the app stores. I guess licensing has run out or something, which is a huge negative about iOS video games by the way. So many games that I've enjoyed playing over the years have been pulled, and that absolutely sucks. But I guess it's a sign of what we get to look forward to in the soon to be non-physical rollout of video games which is soon approaching. Anyway, this game rules. Any of the Angry Bird games absolutely rock. You know the drill really. You use your finger to slingshot a limited number of birds, all with different abilities of some kind towards fortress building peaks and try to take them all down before you run out of birds. Star Wars in particular adds a fantastic gravity mechanic and all of the fantastic music and sound effects from the movies are here. I'm lucky to still have this one on my phone. Device 6. Now I'm going to start by saying that I have never experienced a game like this. I don't necessarily think it would be for everyone, but this super trippy novel, adventure, mystery, puzzle hybrid of a game is unbelievably atmospheric and absorbing. I've only played it for a little while so far, but it's so damn endearing and intriguing. As you read the story, the text sprawls around you as if you were actually the character walking around and you really have to dig deep to find clues to solve the puzzles in order to progress. The soundtrack is essential and really adds to the atmosphere with some really creepy little moments here and there. Definitely worth checking out in my opinion. One recommendation from me is that no matter how tempting it is, try not to look up a walkthrough for this game. Its longevity is based on you personally working out these cryptic and difficult puzzles. It kind of spoils the whole thing if you do. It's kind of short and a one and done playthrough kind of thing. Doodle Jump was my original addictive game for my iPhone. Its simplicity is just magical. The main sprite continuously jumps and you have to tilt the phone from left to right in order to ensure he lands on a platform, which become fewer and fewer the higher you get. Sometimes you pick up little extras such as spring shoes or a rocket pack to progress faster and occasionally you have to touch the screen to shoot an enemy alien out of your way. Your scores or height are saved online and you can see other players' heights pass as you go. This is really satisfying to get a great score on. On the whole, I don't actually think that console conversions work very well on a smartphone, but here are a few to round off this video that actually work pretty well and are probably worth your time. R-Type. This conversion incorporates the touchscreen really well and you have an option for continuous fire. Basically, I find that if you just keep your finger on the screen a little behind your ship and slide it around the screen, you can avoid oncoming enemies and bullets pretty nicely. The only tricky thing is that later in the game, enemies start attacking you from behind and they are kind of obscured by your finger. Sonic CD. Any Sonic games work pretty well on a touch screen as there's really only one direction pad and one button for jump. My preferred game to play on mobile is Sonic CD, which is a conversion of the Sega Mega CD game. This is a rarer game on the whole and on the iPhone was my first experience of it. Woo! 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 
Limbo and Inside. Now admittedly, I haven't actually ever played these games on my smartphone, but I did play them on the PS4 back in the day. And I will admit that these games are absolutely great. I really enjoyed these relatively short and atmospheric platform games. They kind of remind me of a really slick version of Another World or The Heart of Darkness without the cinematics. During the research for this episode, I did read in the reviews for these games for mobile that the touchscreen controls work intuitively and seamlessly. And if this is the only way that you're going to be able to play these games, then they are a solid recommendation from me. Doom. Again, this one they have tried really hard to keep the controls simple, with a direction pad for moving forwards and backwards and strafing, and another thumb anywhere on the screen for left and right directions. One shoot and one open doors. Perfectly simple stuff. The graphics also look lovely and smooth and upscaled. <sighs> Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. This was a full-blown GTA title developed for the underpowered Nintendo DS. This is a great game that harks back to the series' top-down roots, and the touchscreen mechanics of the DS version have been converted perfectly here. I think that seeing as the DS version has seen quite an increase in price over the years, then this is a fantastic way to experience this great title. But as usual, the touchscreen controls can get a little bit frustrating in this game within the normal play. Missions can be easily failed due to a slip of the thumb off of the touchscreen pad, which can make it frustrating. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been really cool to look back at all the little games that I've enjoyed on my smartphone over the years. And to be honest, it is still my go-to pick up and play console for when I'm in a waiting area and the such like. Please let me know in the comment section down below about any smartphone games that you really enjoy that I may have missed out on here. I'm always looking out for new stuff to play and generally the video games on the App Store are extremely budget friendly. Anyway, thanks for watching and subscribing. Until next time, much love. Please look after yourselves and each other and get your geek on with Jig Retro.